Hey everybody, Charles for HumbleMechanic.com back today to talk about more failed Volkswagen parts. Today we're talking AC compressors. So, it's the middle of summer. You're driving along, all of a sudden, boom, the air conditioning in your car shuts off. It gets crazy hot. One of the things that may be wrong with your car is a bad AC compressor. Today, we're gonna take this thing apart and check out what's going on with it. But before we get into the show, let's talk about the sponsor of the day, which is Deutsch Auto Parts. These guys are the Volkswagen Audi parts experts. Awesome service, great pricing. And I've actually teamed up with them to do some really helpful DIY videos. So check them out at shop dap.com and of course i'll put links in the show notes for you guys to check them out so like always before we get into how the part fails let's talk a little bit about how it works this compressor is driven by the serpentine belt this is off of a uh, a tdi jetta ccta engine code and as the pulley rotates it allows the compressor to move refrigerant through the ac system and without getting too deep into uh, how ac systems work just know that this is one of the vital components of your ac system So as you can see, disassembling this AC compressor is no small task, and really it's not meant to be a serviceable part as far as the guts inside of the, uh, the compressor. Now, there's two main styles. There's the style like this, which is called the wobble plate style, where pistons move up and down, and the output's varied by current applied. There's also the kind that's simply just a magnetic clutch on the end. When you turn the air conditioner on, the clutch engages, clunk, and then it starts turning the compressor inside. So, how do they fail? Well, as you can see with all this stuff going on inside, there's numerous ways that they can fail. There's a few, though, that are really common. One is debris inside of the AC system causing failure of the compressor. Basically, junk gets inside of this piece and causes either, you know, something inside to break or these pistons will actually seize up. And that can be anything from an orifice tube coming apart or pieces of the expansion valve. Generally what happens is it's pieces of the receiver dryer, which has a desiccant, basically keeps the system dry. It'll come apart and blow junk inside of the compressor. You also have failure of this valve. This is the electric controller for the compressor. It fits inside the case like this and is basically what controls how much on or off this compressor is. Lately, from what we've seen, this has been the most common point of failure. Now you can actually get this little valve separately, but there's one small issue with that that we'll talk about in just a minute. You can also have a pure clutch issue. If this were a magnetic one, you know, it may be an activation issue with the clutch. Maybe the magnet inside is broken or the wiring internal of the magnetic clutch is broken. You also wanna be sure to check the wiring. On most Volkswagens, generally the wires that go to this compressor run right across the front of the engine over where the starter is, and I've seen a lot of them break at a four pin connector. So that's something you're gonna to wanna to make sure you keep an eye on as well. 
What may be some symptoms of a failing compressor? Well, the obvious one is you have no AC performance. You can actually have a failing compressor and still have some cooling ability, just not what the vehicle is capable of. It also may take a really long time to get cool. So you start your car up, you drive for 20 minutes, still blowing hot air, you may be dealing with something failing inside the compressor. It's not the only thing that can go wrong, but it is something you wanna be concerned about. And they can make noise, you know, a weird rattle or a squeak or, you know, hearing some kind of noise like this uh, definitely could be an issue with the compressor as well. Diagnosing this style of compressor can be a little bit tricky. The kind with the magnet on it, you can look at the serpentine belt circuit and tell whether or not the clutch is engaged. But with these, they're always rotating, it's always spinning, there's no definitive quick look to go, yes, the compressor's turning and functioning, or no, it's not. Whenever we're dealing with an AC concern, one of the key things we need to do is make sure that the Freon level is correct. So before we worry that we may have a bad compressor, we need to make sure we have the proper amount of Freon in the system. The best way to do that is to pull all the Freon out of the vehicle, measure how much was in it, and then put back the proper amount. If the Freon was simply low, we want to make sure that we test the system before we start replacing parts, just in case it was simply a matter of low refrigerant. Now, like I mentioned, the output of these is based on current applied, so we can take an amp clamp and measure how much current is being applied to the compressor. Generally, what I do is I hook up VADCOM or the uh, Otis Diagnostic Scan tool at work, and I'll monitor in a measuring value block how much current is being applied and see whether or not there are any compressor off codes. If the computer sees something weird that it doesn't like, it'll shut the compressor off. And the cool thing is it'll actually tell you why it did that. So it may say zero and that could mean the, the switch is just turned off or low refrigerant, high refrigerant pressure on down the line. There's about 10 of them I think that'll, uh, that'll trip for a compressor off code. So if you have full current applied, you have no compressor off codes, your Freon level is good and you're still not getting proper cooling in your car, you definitely wanna look at the compressor, whether it be the entire compressor or just the control valve. So the big question, is this a DIY? And sadly, I think this may actually be the first one. I don't really recommend this as a DIY for everyone. The biggest reason is you're dealing with evacuation and charging of Freon. That does take equipment in order to pull the Freon out of the system and put in the correct amount. You definitely don't wanna be venting R134A to the atmosphere. I know they say it's non-toxic, but that's still not something we need to be pumping into the atmosphere. Now, if you wanted to take it somewhere, have them evacuate the refrigerant, and then you replace the compressor, I'm all kinds of cool with that. You just definitely don't wanna hold the Schrader valve down and vent all that crap out into the atmosphere. Now, I mentioned that the valve is replaceable separately, and yes, you can get it separately, you can evacuate the system, pop a new valve in it, and hope that it's good. It's a mixed bag though, you know, this is, this is an expensive piece, this is a little bit more affordable piece, but you have to do a little bit more than just jam one of these valves in and hope that it's good. You need to inspect the system and make sure there is no metal penetration throughout the system or you know, the desiccant has come apart from the receiver dryer. And make sure that you're purely dealing with an electronic failure of this valve, not some other type of failure in the system causing the compressor to go bad. I've seen more than one occasion where somebody's put a compressor on it, two or three weeks later, the car comes back in with another failed compressor. It's because there's metal or desiccant throughout the AC system that caused the new compressor to go bad. So if that's the case, you do need to have the system flushed out, all that junk removed, compressor replaced, perhaps the expansion valve replaced, and definitely if the desiccant or receiver dryer has come apart, you wanna replace that as well. Now, you won't see replacing just the valve as a dealership repair either. Since the part's not available from Volkswagen, we wouldn't be able to do that at the dealer. And the main reason why is, let's say I replace this valve for you, you drive across country, and you have a failure in California. There's no way for that dealership in California to warranty this part because it wasn't a Volkswagen part. So if you go to the dealer, really the only repair that they're gonna be able to make is to replace the entire compressor. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up there. If you have any questions or comments, post it in the comments section below. Hey, if you like the video, throw it a thumbs up on YouTube. I always appreciate that. You can also subscribe on YouTube or on the blog at HumbleMechanic.com. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the blog, and obviously here on YouTube. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Check out how cool this is. I know it puts some pictures up there.